Hi folks, I'm Nath with Two Guys in a Ride, and welcome to our how-to video on the 2021 Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon. This is a G63. All right, today I'll be covering the driver's information and infotainment screens. I'll do a general overview. I'll show you how to access information and do a deep dive. Let's get started. Today we're working with our friends at Sears Imported Autos selling beautiful Mercedes-Benz in Minnetonka, Minnesota. Okay, so the, the, the driver's screen and the infotainment screen are both MBUX, but it's the earlier version of MBUX. So you don't have all the functionality that you have in the later MBUX systems, uh, despite the fact that it's a 2021. Um, so, but we're going to cover both these screens. This is a 12.3 inch driver's information screen. And the, the, the awesome thing about it is that Mercedes does such a great job using these steering wheel controls. These are the best uh, swipe pads I've seen on any steering wheel. They work exactly like you would think they would. Um, on the screen, there are several things you can customize. One thing you can't customize is what appears in the um, miles per hour gauge on the left. Um, that information you can't change. Now you can change the appearance of the gauges and I'll show you all that, but you can change what is in the center screen. You can change what shows up in the RPM gauge. So to do that, I am going to use this swipe pad on the left and this home button. So the home button, if I push it, gives you your basic menu. So up here, you start with service, and then you have uh, drive assist, and so on. It goes all the way through here to these different items. So under designs is where you can change the, the dashboard completely. So, okay, if I swipe up to sport and I click, then you get this change, okay? And if I swipe down to progressive, you get this, okay? Now, um, if I then press the home button and I go over to say trip information, you notice that that now shows up on the left. So um, that's the way that you can customize the screen itself. Okay, I'm going to go back to home for a minute and I'm going to change it to the classic view just to make it a little easier to see information. Okay, if I swipe all the way over to the right and I, you see the RPM gauge highlighted and I click the trackpad, I can now swipe up, I get navigation, I get uh, my RPM gauge back with, um, with miles per gallon and, and how many hours I've gone, what my average speed has been from start. If I swipe up again, I get uh, oil temperature, I get my um, tire pressure right here and then my outdoor temperature. If I swipe up again, I get boost horsepower and foot, pound foot of torque. And if I swipe up again, I get a G meter. If I swipe up again, I'm just back to the regular um, RPM gauge. So that one is customizable. All right, I'm gonna swipe back to the middle here and I am gonna press the home button and we're gonna go, um, start actually with the trip gauges. So if I press the uh, button here, okay, so I've got an odometer. If I go down here, I get my range and my consumption along with a little graph. Uh, if I go down here, I get uh, eco driving display from start. Um, I can get another graph here of how many hours I've been going, how many miles, average miles per gallon, average you know speed, that kind of stuff. Um, from This is from start, this is from the last time it was reset, it's the same gauge. And if I go down here, I've got a digital speedometer. And if I go down again, I'm back to the top. Now on any one of these, to reset them, if they're resettable, you just click the trackpad and it'll say, do you want to reset it? Now you just scroll down to yes and click, or in my case, I'm going to click no. All right, I'm going to press the home button. I'm going to go back here to the left. Now this one is for service, but we're going to go over here to driver assist. Now if I click on that one, you have a couple screens. So first you get this one. So you got your, you got your uh, cruise control settings. You got your lane guidance settings. Um, it even tells you how many feet you are behind the vehicle. And if I swipe down, 
Uh, this is a tension assist, so if it senses you're weaving out of the lines or whatever, um, that meter is going to go up and eventually it's going to tell you to pull over and take a rest. And if I swipe again, I'm back to the same screen. So that's your driver assist screen. Uh, I'm going to press the home button again. I'm going to go over here to the AMG performance screen. Click the uh, trackpad. Okay. So in, in this picture, you get your boost gauge, you get your oil temperature, and I believe what is the transmission temperature. All right, down here, if I go again, and this is just telling you how it is. So for instance, if I went down and I wanted to change the drive mode from uh, dr manual to, or from automatic to manual, I can click there, you see it changed from D to M. Now I can use the shift paddles. Okay, if I want the traction control on or in sport mode, and these are all buttons that are in the center uh, console. Okay, uh, for instance, the suspension, I can change to sport, sport plus, comfort, but none of that is changeable from the steering wheel. You have to go to uh, exterior buttons. This just tells you what your settings are. All right, I'm going to scroll down. You get a G meter, and then you get a lap timer. And then uh, you get another boost gauge with horsepower and pound foot of torque. And then we're back to the first screen. All right, I'm gonna click the home button. And then we're gonna go over here. We've already been through trip meter, so we're gonna go to navigation. So if you want to see your navigation in this uh, screen right here, you can do this. And then from here, you can select things like previous destinations. Well, there are no entries, of course, so nothing's going to show up. But if you had other entries that you had programmed in, those would show up and you could thumb, thumb through, click on them, and it would set the, the destination for you. And then you get a nice compass at the top. Okay, so I'm going to hit the home button again. And I'm going to go over here. This is where you get your radio. So if I click here, if I click up and down on the thumb track here, I can go through uh, my presets. Okay. And if I want to see the sources, I can click the trackpad and now I can switch between the AM, FM, Sirius XM. Okay. Um, hit the home button and home button again. And then I'm going to go to media. So here would be like your phone if it was hooked through Bluetooth. All right. Hit the back button. Click on phone for a minute. All right, so there is no phone hooked up currently, but if I did, that would show up there. This is like, you know, phone calls, uh, um, getting a phone call, all that kind of stuff, as opposed to the media side of a, of a Bluetooth connection. I'm going to hit the home button, and I've been through designs already. So that's the basics of the driver's information screen. Um, and it, it's very nice. I mean, there's lots of ways to customize this, lots of the ways um, to get the different information that you want. Next, we're going to move over to the infotainment screen. All right, so the infotainment screen is a 12.3 inch screen, and again, it's an earlier version of MBUX. Um, I absolutely love the, the large screens um, and the way they're orientated. That, for me personally, works really really well okay so uh this has the uh burmester surround uh, surround sound system um, it has 15 speakers 640 watts of power with a subwoofer um, it has the 360 camera system it also has apple carplay android auto sirius xm am fm hd radio bluetooth and navigation okay so let's go through this screen so this is not a touch screen because it's an earlier version of mbux so you have the command system down here but you thankfully have the the thumb trackpad up on the right side of the steering wheel you've got a, a home button and a back button and honestly that's what i'm going to use just because it is so easy to use so i'm going to press the home button here for a minute and you can see that we've got all these different things kind of like we had in the driver's information screen uh, and so we'll just kind of go through these. So let's start with navigation. I right, just click on that. What a beautiful, huge screen. Okay, so you may want to say, well, how would I zoom in or zoom out? Well, um, if you just take the rotary command button, <laughs> I said I wouldn't use this and I am, but that just zooms right in and out for you, which is really nice. Just, just by scrolling it, so you don't have to do anything. Um, so let's talk about a couple of things 
Um, this doesn't have like the um, the augmented reality navigation or anything, but it's a good navigation system. So let's talk about how to program a route. I'm, I'm gonna swipe over and I'll, I'll hit enter destination. So I'm gonna try and enter this manually. Um, voice command is so much easier, but I'm just gonna see, it'll pick up after a couple letters, but it is cumbersome after there. So I'm gonna go up and click on McDonald's. All right, I'm gonna say select destination or online search. And it's found some, so I'm gonna rotate down to this one, press the command button. I'm gonna press the command button again to start it. The route is being calculated. Please right. proceed to the highlighted route. I like root. Root. Sounds fancy. All right. So the easiest way to do this is voice command. So to get out of this, though, I'm going to go over to the right. I'm going to go up here and hit cancel route. And now I'm going to use voice command. So on your steering wheel button on the right hand side, you've got a uh, little toggle switch down is favorites, up is voice command. All right, I'm just gonna use voice command. Navigate to McDonald's. The line number, please. One. Highway 55, Minnesota, accepted. Starting route guidance. Please proceed to the highlighted route. The temptation of this is going to be go up. So, okay, now I want to click, and, and that doesn't work. So I'm just going to go over here and click on Cancel Route Guidance again. Then I'm going to hit the back button. But you can see voice command is so much easier to do. Um, but now you've seen both ways and how to cancel the route. So let's go back to the Home button, and let's go over to the radio. So if I click on this, this is going to give us AM, FM, and Sirius XM. So um, to take a look at the different sources, we're going to go to radio source. So I swiped over to the right, and here I got HD radio FM, HD radio AM, Sirius XM radio, and TuneIn radio. So I got four different choices. I'm just going to stay on HD uh, FM here. And let's talk about uh, some simple things like how to change stations. Well, first of all, you'll notice the up-down arrows up here. All right, so if you just go up and down on the trackpad, it's like a seek function. Seek backwards, and this is seek forwards. Kind of wish they put the arrows going the other way, but that's what that is. Okay, so um, how to save uh, a radio station as a favorite. So here I am and I'm on 91.1, whatever that is, and just click and hold the trackpad, then it's been added to my presets. All right, so that's that's how you tune, that's how you um, can save a favorite. Now let's take a look at sound settings. So if I go down here and I look at sound and click on here, then I've got equalizer, I can go right here, and again you just use the trackpad and slide over and slide up or down. Okay, hit the back button, and I can go down to all of these, right? So this is where you would turn the surround sound on or off. And then the sound focus <clears throat> changes it to all seats, front or rear. I'm hit the back button again. Um, balance and fader will work just the same way. You just use the um, trackpad to adjust. All right, I'm going to hit the back button again. Hit the back button one more time. And then I'm going to just go to radio source for a minute because this is FM. If I go to uh, AM, it's going to look the same and run the same. And then if I go back over here and I go to radio source and I go to Sirius XM, it's going to look the same, um, except for you get a, a play pause button over here. And then if I swipe over, go down to radio source again, and I go down to tune in radio. Again, it's gonna look very, very much the same. So you get the same options on the left. So once you know how to run one of these, you know how to run all of them. All right. So I'm gonna hit the back button here and then I'm gonna hit the home button. All right, let's take a look at the next one, which is media. If I plug in or click on here, 
Um, this wants to look at a Bluetooth device. So I'm going to take my phone right now and just hook it via Bluetooth. So now this is playing off of Pandora. Okay. So again, this is going to look like your, your AM and FM and Sirius XM radios. So if I scroll up, I'm going backwards a track. If I scroll down, I'm going forwards a track. Okay. Um, if I scroll to the right, then I can have playback controls. But you notice now I get sound and I get media sources. So if I go back here, it will also look like for a SD card or a USB device under media sources. All right, I'm gonna go backwards. I'm gonna go backwards one. I'm gonna hit the home button. So that's under media. Now that I've connected via Bluetooth already, the phone should show up something here. I wanna use this. So I'm gonna click here. Okay, we should be set. So I hit the back button here. Here we go. So I got contacts, recent calls, text messages. Um, there's no active call, of course. And then I can look at the different Bluetooth devices that are connected. So if I want to see an actual just keypad, I can go here and I can use the, the command uh, rotary dial or the uh, trackpad on the steering wheel to dial out a number. Okay, so there you go. Let's go up to home again. And let's go over to vehicle. All right, now here's where you can select all sorts of things. So we won't go through all of them, but we'll show you a few of them here. So for instance, seats. If I put that on, I can adjust the driver's seat or the passenger seat. So right now, I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna get a hot, relaxing back. Okay, so it's not only gonna heat the seat for me, but it, it's it's gonna massage it too, and then I can I can turn off high intensity if I don't want high intensity, and then these are all the options you have. Okay, now I'm gonna hit the back button once, so I could do this, and I could I could do the same thing with the passenger seat. If I want to look at the dynamic seat, I can have level two or level one. Okay, or off. I click that, and then lumbar. Okay, this is just a slide with the trackpad, which is really cool. And boy, it responds fairly quickly. <laughs> and then you can set it to be a little bit higher in the seat, which is, inf so it's just like infinitely adjustable. You can get that right where you want, that lumbar right where you want it. All right, and then you've got side bolsters. Oh boy, you feel those tighten up, which is really nice when you're driving. Um, so as you go around corners, it really tends to hold you in the seat. All right, so you can do that for driver or passenger. I'm gonna hit the back button again. All right, um, let's look at dynamic select here. I can do an individual configuration for drive mode. And if I go into there, I can do the drive, transmission, dynamic suspension, and exhaust. And then I can do the electronic stability program. So let's just do two of these. So if I look at the drive, it's just a choice. You go through here and select what you want, and then click on it. Okay, now I select a sport, and you see now it's there. Okay, and let's do exhaust system. Balanced or powerful. And if I click on now, you see that it switched. It doesn't show you when you click on it. It kind of goes right back to this screen, but it's just, you just go through this menu, and you can change all of these settings. I'm going to hit the back button here, and let's do this light setting. So if I go here, I get ambient light. This has 64 different uh, colors here. And I can, uh, if I go over here, I can select the intensity. Uh, if I go over here, I can select different ones, ocean blue. Uh, I can select the brightness zones. Now you see I have individual control over each one of these areas, display, front and rear. Okay. And then you can have different effects. So lots of ways to customize your ambient lighting. And that's where you get it. Okay. You also have your intelligent light system here. That's either on or off. Uh, low beam headlamps here. You can go through here and set it's for right-sided or left-sided traffic, depending on what country you're driving in. Daytime running lights on or off. And then locator light. So you click that off, click that on, you hit the remotes, you can see all the different lights that would come on. Okay, 
I'm gonna hit the back button here. Another one that we should look at, and that's the assistance one here. So if I look under here, you have traffic sign assist, and if I click on that, you can say display in command or don't display in command, and then it'll you can set what you want for a warning. That's where you can change what kind of warning you get it and where it appears. So I'm gonna hit the back button a minute. Uh, camera and parking. So over here, you can have maneuvering assist. You can set warning tones. And then in case you want to clean your rear view camera because it's underneath the spare tire, kind of you can click this, it will open the cover, you can go back there and clean it. Hit the back button again, active brake assist. You can have that early, medium, late, or off. And really, the best way for you to do it is try it out and see which one fits you better. Um, but that's where you adjust it. Attention assist we've gone over before, but this is where you can adjust the level. Um, uh, so you want it sensitive, standard, or off. And then would you like it to suggest a rest area? Some parts you can pull over. Lane keeping assist is right here, adaptive or standard. Blind spot assist is there, and that's the last one. So under blind spot assist, it's either just on or off. I'm gonna hit the back button here. I'm gonna hit the back button here, and I'm gonna go over one more to system. So here you can affect the displays and designs. So I'm gonna go to designs, and again, this is changing what's on the dashboard, the driver's area, not necessarily um, the screen, the infotainment screen that we're looking at. Dashboard just changed. But, um, so, I'm just going to leave it on classic there. All right, I'm going to hit back button. You can change the display brightness here. Hit the back button. You can turn the display off. Of course, that just, it's nice because if you're driving at night, you just get less glare on you. Click the trackpad or the command button, and it just reappears night or day design you can set it to automatic and again it just automatically makes it brighter during the day and dimmer during night or you can say i want it always day or always night hit the back button okay and that's the end of that area so i'm going to hit the back button again um and you can you can down here you can change the input for the touchpad sensitivity touchpad control sensitivity um you want to tap do you want haptic feedback on or off acoustic operating feedback lots of changes and a simple click uh usually turns them on or off let me hit back again so under audio here that you have different settings so traffic and uh, navigation announcements so you can set that voice guidance volume that where they talk to you um, audio fade out during voice guidance that means your if your radio is playing in the background it, it, it turns the volume down for you do you want voice guidance off or uh, voice guidance during a call if that's not check marked and you're getting voice gu navigation voice guidance and you get a phone call it'll stop giving you the guidance vocally uh, so then you just have to really page into the screen all right hit the back button here um, system feedback Okay, voice output volume. You can change that right there. Acoustic operating feedback. You can have normal, loud, or off. I'm gonna hit the back button. And read out handwriting recognition, which you can do that in the system for the navigation, but honestly, using voice command is just so much easier. Um, you can look at some settings for your phone. You can set a ringtone volume. You can set a call volume. I go back again, and then active park assist. You can have a warning tone volume. You can set the warning tone pitch. Now this one is interesting. Now see, you know, we've seen that more and more cars, but depending on your hearing. You see how they change pitch. One of these you might hear a whole lot better than the other, so that'd be a worthwhile one to go in and, and, and check, especially if your hearing's off a little bit. And then you can click on, click on warn early if you want, and then again, audio fade out during warning tones. Um, I, I, I would just set the warning volume so it was loud enough that I wouldn't have to turn down my media. All right, I'm gonna hit back twice. I'm gonna hit back again. Um, you can look at the connect, Wi-Fi connectivity because this does have a 4G uh, LTE Wi-Fi hotspot. And of course, you've got Bluetooth devices here. And then you can look at the command uh, touch right here. So command touch allows you to now operate the, the command says navigation from your phone. You gotta download an app and you gotta go through some setup, but that's right there. And of course you have date and time you can set right here if you click on it, okay? Hit the back button. 
You can change the language and then you can change the units. Now you can go in here and personalize everything, but that's where you're gonna set up a profile, right? Um, if you have an existing profile on another Mercedes, you can usually, if it's new enough, you can just import it. And then you have software update. This does get uh, over the air automatic updates. And then of course you can do a system backup, you got a, uh, you can type in a pin to protect your information so not everyone can use it. And then there's basic system information. And then if you completely mess up, you can reset it to factory settings. So I'm gonna hit the back button here. This is um, the main menu. If I thumb down on the trackpad, I get to my favorites. And, and these are all just different favorites, okay? So I can, and I can change them, but if you go through, these are all just favorites. So if you don't want to, like, what menu is that under, you can just go down to favorites and say, I want driver's massage, okay? And now my massage is working, right? Simple as that. You can, if I go back down here again, and I go down, like, scroll down with my thumb, not click, I can create a new favorite if I want, and then you always get the same choices. Do I want a favorite to be navigation, entertainment, phone, connect, vehicle or systems so you pick and I'm gonna say well I want this one to turn voice guidance on or off all right and then I can slide this to any spot I want in my favorites and then I should be able to go here and voice guidance has been activated things so I'm gonna go to vehicle data for a minute okay so I can have this view, which is kind of cool, gives me a compass, gives me the road, gives me a whole bunch of, you know, uh, uh, degree of incline here, degree of left, right pitch, um, gas pedal, brake, um, and that, 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 that's, kind of, that's kind of cool, and it tells you what mode you're in. So this is the parking assist, and if you were using it, you would yeah, press that button to get started. This is the front view, this is a little narrower front view plus a top-down view. I, I mean, I love that. This is the full screen. This is a split screen. You get the top overhead plus you get um, a little narrower front view. Two side views plus the overhead view. A back view, but it's full screen. A little narrower back view, but again, you get the 360. All right, and then down here you have a trailer camera. Okay, right? so really nice camera system. I'm gonna hit the back button here. I'm gonna hit the back button again. Um, now, that's vehicle data. If I want to look at engine data, I can click on here, and you get some really cool gauges. That's how horsepower and, and pound-foot of torque, along with your oil temperature and your transmission temperature. And that is just really, really cool. <laughs> so then you can change your other gauges on your dashboard to something else. I'm going to hit the back button. Dynamic data. Okay, so here I'm getting a G meter, I'm getting again the horsepower, pound foot of torque, and then boost for the turbo. Uh, that's just pretty cool. Lots of, and, it, and they'll change a little bit according to the, the mode that you're in, but wow. All right, so I'll hit back one more time here. That's it for uh, the infotainment screen and the driver's information screen on the 2021 Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon G63 AMG. Thanks for watching. I hope this has been helpful.